Hello, and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Terry Morrow, and I'm here with Catherine Holeko. Hello. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Catherine and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics, because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. This week, we are continuing with our watches of Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist Season 2 and Veronica Mars Season 3. We will be discussing the fifth episodes of each of those seasons and starting with Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist with the episode titled Zoe's Extraordinary Trip. Now, when we mentioned that title last week, we were hopeful that they were going to take my advice and have Zoe get out of town and listen to the singing thoughts of new people and not have to deal with her work and her love life. And you said, I believe, kind of as a joke. Or maybe it's <laughs> drugs. And we had a good laugh. That's what it was. Yep. <sighs> That's what it was. That's I was sick. driven to text you when I saw that. Oh, for goodness sake! <laughs> I can't believe it, but yes, they did. <laughs> Zoe getting high with her neighbor and her boss, Danny Michael Davis. So that was interesting. A little bit, but not much. <laughs> there wasn't really that much to it. Just a yeah. bunch of stoner jokes and a one musical number. Right. And Zoe bonding in a new way with... <sighs> Danny Michael Davis, I guess. Who I care about, not even a little bit. Right. I suppose the the one thing that possibly um, redeemed this episode was that maybe they're not making Aiden into a love interest. He may be just a buddy. We can only hope. The neighbor. He just. He also just seems like he's from another show, doesn't he? <laughs> He just doesn't seem like any of the other characters or any of the other actors. He just seems like somebody's nephew who needed to have a paycheck or something. Yeah, because, because they, <laughs> like, what do they need him for? They I don't, don't know. They don't need any new characters. They have enough. <laughs> they really don't. I don't understand. Well, I guess it's like, you wanted different people? You wanted to stop with the love life and the work? Here, she'll go get... Get to uh, have a drug trip in her neighbor's basement. There you go. Are you happy? No, I'm not happy. Nope. As long as you're going to bring somebody new in, why not have it be Chip Zine and let the man sing? Why do you bring in a Broadway person to play Max's dad and then have him not sing? Why, oh, why, oh, why? I was waiting for the great emotional father-son duet. Nope. Nope. Never happened. Possibly it's coming later. Can't tell from IMDb because they only have up to the most recent uh, episode. So Also, I did not really buy Max standing on his principles and refusing no, his father's No, that was ridiculous. Money. How yeah. much did I wish Mo was there in that moment to just take the check? Thank you very be much. Like, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> I'll be going to the bank right now. Yes. <laughs> you can stand on your principles, Max, all you want. I'm taking the check. That was <laughs> yeah. ridiculous. You and can make the check out to me, Mo. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if that helps. Yeah, that was that was all. Fathers and sons, don't you know? <laughs> it's a subject that's never been approached on TV or movies or musicals. <laughs> Breaking new ground here. Yeah, but yeah. why would they not break that ground in song? Why was- not? Oh, my right. goodness. Why do you bring Chip Zion on for that? But yeah. I don't know. Maybe I haven't been keeping up with the news. Maybe he's lost his voice in some significant way and they wanted to just <laughs> throw him a bone. But mm-hmm. I hope he'd be back to sing it, you know, sing his thoughts. He was a mm-hmm. perfectly good breakfast. Zoe was there. Zoe was there. He could have right. sang. <sighs> Instead, the long-haired guy from nowhere. Uh, maybe he's Maybe he's somebody that we haven't heard of. But anyway, the, the neighbor got to sing. Yeah. In the middle of the street. Mm-hmm. Because why not? Right. Well, because they were tripping together. <laughs> I guess so. That's something I've never seen in a TV show either. It's just, it was like, <laughs> we take this time out for this. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, and uh, then, you know, by the end of the episode, it takes a turn into like actual current events and mm-hmm. that are meaningful and worth covering on your tv show but not fun (laughs) (laughs) i like this show and it's more fun right Uh, no that's not true see i'm i'm 
I mean, I liked it when her dad was there and dying of a gruesome disability. So that was meaningful. So you know what? I asked for there to be some more heaviness. Maybe this is the heaviness. Mm -hmm. But this is what you got. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see what they do with it. Yes. I am not. This is Simon um, making a statement about racism. And it's part of his duties as the company spokesperson. But. You know, given the situation he was in, you could sort of not not say something. Oh yeah, the contrivance that this device has this problem. Okay, all mm-hmm. right. Let's let's see where you're going to go with it. Well, and that is something that uh, that has happened with um, other t- face recognition. Yes, which they like mentioned products, before. right? So yeah, it is topical in that way as well. I would like to think that when they originally had the idea on this show, not not the not the Sparkpoint people, but the writers and producers of this show, when they got the, the idea that this company was going to do this, that way back then they thought, "Hey, we can use this for a plot mm-hmm. in the future about this because we realize that this facial recognition has this problem." Right. I hope it was that and not. Oh crap! We're halfway through season two, and we really don't have any idea what to do. Oh, I know. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. I fear it's the latter, but it could be the former. Yeah, maybe. Maybe they had a plan. I guess we wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I I will hold out hope that they do something worthwhile with this plot, and mm-hmm. that Chip Sign comes back and sings. Yeah. Maybe the restaurant opening. Maybe Mo called the dad and said. Give me the check. <laughs> Send it directly to me. Here's my address. Or you can direct deposit it if you like. You can transfer it directly. We don't need paper. Let me help your son. Oh, well. So anything else about that episode that we need to talk about? Oh, the whole um, thing between Zoe's mom and her sister-in-law's sister. Right, Jenna. Which? I mean, that was just a very TV kind of It like- really was. You're fired, and then they have, like, a come-to-Jesus moment, but she's still fired. Yes. Like, yep, yeah, pretty much what I would have expected, how I would have expected that to go down. Yes. But it also kind of felt like we have 20 extra minutes in this episode. What are we going to do with them? <laughs> right. And we have to get rid of this character. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she's only on for four episodes or right. whatever it is. Like, her time's <laughs> up. We have to find a way to get her out of here. She didn't even get a song on the way out, did she? I don't think so. Hmm. We're done with you. We have trippy production numbers to do instead. Right. We have popsicles to buy. (laughs) All right, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. I'm going to give you a little rope. See how it goes. Hoping for good things. Yes. And Veronica Mars. Ah, Veronica. Uh, This week's episode was President Evil. And it really felt to me like the old days of season one, Cases of the Week. Where mm-hmm. the uh, the continuing storyline was kind of pushed to the beginning and the end of the episode, and everything in between had absolutely nothing to do with it. And yeah. I support that. That's fine. Right. More of that. Although I am disappointed with Veronica for kind of selling Weevil out so easily, or just just doubting I him did so not quickly. Believe that at all? After she yeah. had just done this classroom presentation, which also I felt like should you be. Outing your friend who you got a job at your college as, you know, a former gang member and all of this mm-hmm. stuff in front of other – I mean, she felt like she set him up, and then when he got taken down, she kicked him. Yeah, and I was uncomfortable with him being, like, a show-and-tell, you yeah. know, a literal show-and-tell. He was icky. Like, he's a human being. I know. I don't know. That's just kind of – and it would seem like, I mean, I don't know what information they gave the college when he got the job, but it doesn't, they don't necessarily need to broadcast right. his background. Right. You know, if he wants to, I mean, I guess he was okay with it or he wouldn't have done it, but then she just turns right around and thinks the worst of him. Yeah. <sighs> Veronica. Come on, Veronica. We expect better of you. She was upset yes. about losing the necklace. That must be it. The necklace, which has never been, like, mentioned. Right. Or- <laughs> yes. And did, did they take her purse also and, like, her taser and her identification and everything? Or did they just take her necklace? Yeah, good question. I mean, they made a big deal out of the necklace, but... Yeah. It was unclear if she had that other stuff on her or... Yeah. Yeah. 
Also, I'm not sure what her costume in Logan's was supposed to be. <laughs> I don't know. Black <laughs> wigs was all I got. Would we have known it back then? <laughs> Maybe. Because I, I don't either. And I didn't really care for Logan. And I mean, Logan and Weevil poking at each other, I guess. Is that their shtick? They were friends for five minutes. They remember that? They were friends for a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I miss those days. Could those days come back? Right. <sighs> Anyway, and then there was the other plot of the dean, mm-hmm. Hyed Begley Jr., nice to see you again, and his stepson, presumably not the same one who destroyed his car that time, but a nine-year-old stepson. A younger one, yeah. With cancer, who needs a bone marrow transplant from his deadbeat biological father, and who they, I guess, Keith tricks into coming in and talking to them about it. And then when he says no, I guess the dean and his wife kidnap him and force him to do it in some way and then pay him off. And so maybe maybe Ed Bagley Jr. is not going to be a season-long big bad, but just a convenient storyline facilitator every so often. Right. Which, all right, there are worse gigs. <laughs> but I was all not trusting him in this one, but it played out pretty much... On the up and up, I guess. I mean, as up and up as yes, it is to right, <laughs> right. kidnap someone and take their bone marrow. Yes, it wasn't that they were abducting him for some other reason entirely. Um, yeah. Or whatever, you know, trying to find him to kill him for something. The whole storyline, whatever your thoughts about about the Dean-related storyline, it was all worth it for the deployment of Cliff yes. in two really wonderful scenes. <laughs> you know, pretending to be a voiceover guy masterfully yes. and then you know stand, when keith is being hassled by the law you know he happens to be there eating his lunch and just <laughs> steps right in yeah that is so nice i really enjoy that character so much and i would say we need to see more of him but it's probably the fact that we don't that makes him so delightful and whether he turns yeah. whenever he turns up it's like cliff <laughs> this is gonna be good yes <sighs> that was fun he and Vinny. <laughs> I wonder if we're going to see Vinny again after his whole... Oh, I'm, oh sure. He's going to crawl out from under a rock anytime now. Um, you know, he's resilient. Mm-hmm. But uh, he'll probably be yelling at Keith for not splitting the painting with him. And, but uh, And then there was also the very sad, sad story of Wallace failing his class almost and then cheating and undoubtedly being in big trouble though i would think not expelled because i think he's still on the show it seemed like did he maybe confess or oh could be because i don't know it it, because the professor was looking at it and then he's his face kind of changed and i thought it would be that he caught him cheating but yeah you're right you're right that could be that and in which case you know he's gonna be Hassled by like yes. the basketball team and whoever right. else is using this, yeah, quote tutor. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This poor Wallace having to be the person they use for these plots. Mm-hmm. That guy who is his friend, constantly leading him astray. Have we seen him? I know I've seen him someplace. Have we seen him on this show? Yeah, I didn't recognize him um, as someone we had seen before. But it seemed like we were supposed to know who he was. Yeah. Was he, I don't know if he was like a, another basketball player from the school or something. It sounded like they were, had that that's who he was meant to be, a teammate. Huh. Some I've definitely seen sort. him somewhere. But I hope we don't see him anymore because he's a bad influence. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Wallace just trying to study. Yeah. Come on, man. Let him do his work. But uh, I assume that whatever happens, he's still going to be on the show, right? Mm-hmm. I hope so. <laughs> Please don't take Wallace away from no! us. We need him. Yes. And uh, and there was a little bit on the rape plot at the beginning and the end. Veronica is intrepidly trying to track down the guy who was in the ATM picture with Claire and, you know, zooms in on the little logo on his shirt. Yeah. Bad guys, let me just advise you, no logos on the shirts. <laughs> right. And if it's going to be a logo on the shirt, have it be a generic logo, not some camp you went to. What <laughs> is wrong with you? Uh, but anyway, she traces it to a camp and she does her little, you know, I can call people and get them to send me anything act. Yep. Which indeed, would a camp really just email 
give all that information no, to somebody and also just that would be so much work i know <laughs> like, names addresses and phone numbers of every camper for the past <laughs> five years like who's gonna sit like, around and pull all that out oh sure stranger on the phone we'll be happy to do that she didn't even have to yeah. promise that she had gone there she like sends her email address from, she said they, she did say that she had gone there but she wouldn't they be able to look her up and say we've yeah, had no veronica think. mars right <sighs> That is just sloppy work there. But uh, all in all, I, I did not I, – I was not as, as discomforted about by this episode as I have been by the ones before it, although I did fast forward through the robbery scene just because mm. I'm a free and independent adult and I can do what I want. <laughs> but <laughs> um, well, we'll see where this goes. Um, next week we will watch episode six of both shows. We have Zoe's Extraordinary Reckoning, which sounds like just barrels of fun, doesn't it? <laughs> and on Veronica Mars, the episode is entitled High Infidelity, which I would have to think bodes poorly for Veronica and Logan, but who knows? Might be somebody else. Could be. Could be. Maybe the Dean and his Maybe wife are on the Laura's outs now. Maybe Laura and coming back. Could be. That would be nice. I would I would vote for that. May we have uh -huh. that, please? Yes. And that is going to be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes. We have something new for you every weekday. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Goodbye, Catherine. Bye, Terry. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.